Today I have a quick one for you. I saw this trick to use the glow feature or the glow effect in the Vincent Resolve the other day on TikTok and I started testing it out myself and I thought it was a fun way to add a little bit of extra contrast to the image while you are done grading. Now you could use this as your main source of contrast as well and we can take a look at that but I would probably use it as just like an extra little add-on at the end. So let's jump straight into the Vincent Resolve and have a look at what it's all about. All right, so here we have a clip and I've already graded it as I would grade it normally. So if we just take a look at what it was before, this is the log image. This is with the Rec. 79 conversion. This was shot on my Canon R6. I add my lot. I do a little bit of exposure adjustments, add some saturation and balance, play around with the color slides to add a little bit more skin tones and then add a little bit of masking at the end. We have a curves node here that I haven't used, so we can essentially just delete that and that it will just make room for our other node. So everything looks pretty good and I'm pretty happy with the soft contrast that we have here, but say we wanna add a little bit more. One thing that we could do is that we could just go into the contrast here and we could start playing around with this. And this probably gives us somewhat of the same result as what we're about to see. But there is a fun way to do it with the glow. So let's just reset this node call it glow instead. And if we head into the effects tab here and hit glow, then we can find this feature. Now I'm not sure if this is a paid feature or not, but if we drag it on here, normally this is supposed to give you uh, actually glow on your image. So if we turn this threshold down, you can see that's exactly what it does. It's kind of making everything glowy. But what I wanna do first is turn this all the way down to zero. Then I wanna turn the spread all the way down as well and the saturation here as well. So these are just the main things that I start doing when I do this glow effect and adding this composition type or composite mode into soft light kind of starts already giving us a little bit. Now, this is not perfect by any means. So we need to start tweaking it a little bit. And if we start adding in the glow here again, or the shine threshold, it's not really working the way I want. Now, the most important thing is to keep the spread as low as possible. And you can see it has actually added some contrast to our image, but I like to start playing around with the gain a little bit and the gamma here as well, just to kind of see where we can get it to lie. Now, it's adding too much contrast now, that's for sure. So if we play around with the opacity here and with the global blend mode, we can make the effect a little bit more subtle, and then we can start to tweak these as we want. So we can start adding a little bit of the shine threshold back here to see how much, or how little we wanna add. And with these few adjustments, we can actually start adding contrast to the entire image, spreading apart the brighter areas from the darker areas. This is not something I would use in every single grade that I'm doing, but I think it's a fun add-on to use some of these extra tools. And I would probably put the blend mode around 0.3 down here and then play around with the opacity as well because I don't want, especially for this particular shot, I don't want it to be too strong, but just this little bit of contrast that is added, I think is a nice add-on. And it can be difficult sometimes to get with the curves without tweaking it too much. So this, I feel like is an easy way as soon as you've nailed down these settings. So first I put the shine down to zero, the spread down to zero and the saturation down to zero. Then I would probably tweak the opacity in the blend mode a little bit. And then I think we can pretty much just adjust what we want in this shine threshold up here. And I think we can get some pretty nice results just doing that. So this is one way to use it. And this is, again, for me, this is just for fun to try out some different things, some different techniques. But say you wanted to do this as the main source of contrast for your clip. So if you duplicate the clip here, Make sure that we are on the second one, we are. If we just delete all the other nodes here, apart from the Rec. 9 conversions, now we just have the glow. And if we reset this again, drag another glow feature on here. Now let's try and see if we could actually use it as just our contrast. So now we are in Rec. 9 And if we start by pulling down shine here, the spread and the saturation, and then turn it into soft light mode here, turn down the opacity a bit and the blend mode a little bit, now we're already starting to get to something that could work. So let's just first play around with the shine threshold here. It is doing a little bit, but I think we need to play around with the gain and the gamma here a little bit as well. So pulling down the gamma gain here and then seeing, turning up the blend mode and the opacity here. And we're using this alone because we had so many other things going on in the other one. You have to go a little bit stronger on this I can see from doing this now. And you can see this is before and this is after. So it's actually adding quite a lot of nice contrast 
just by doing this. And for some people, this might be an easier way of doing it. Again, this might feel a little bit more technical in some of the ways that it's working as well. So I'm not sure I would recommend using this as the main thing, but you can see when you've set it up, you can kind of play around with tweaking these a little bit. And I feel like it gives a nice contrast. Now, if you just wanted a clean image with some more contrast, this could be a way to go for. And we just have three notes. Essentially, we could just have a conversion to Rec. 79 and then have the glow before that. And then we have a pretty nice way of creating contrast. So one last thing I want to test is just if you go in here, we create a still and then we turn this note off, make a split screen here. So we want split and we want to choose our still image. So now we have our still image here on the left and what I am on the right, sorry. What I'm just curious to try is if I went in here and set contrast and just try to drag these to the same amounts, how would that work? Because I think it'll be pretty difficult to tweak it to exactly the same thing. So what I'm looking at here is I'm trying to look at the waveform here to try and balance out everything to look sort of the same. But it feels like it's a bit difficult to get the exact same roll off here. We are getting close. So it's not horrible, but there's definitely some things here that are different. I feel like we have more or less on the left side. Definitely have a little bit less here and then just more. Now we're almost there. And it looks like we're adding a bit more saturation when we're doing it with the sliders here, but we're getting pretty close. So again, tweaking this is not exactly an S curve and depending on what you need and what you want, this could be one way to go about it, but yeah, it was just to show you and show you a different technique to add some contrast as well, depending on what you want to do. So I said, this was just a quick one today. I just wanted to show you this feature and then you can do with it what you want. I'll probably continue to use the tone curve myself or the contrast slider, but I did find that adding it at the, as the last step, just to add a little bit more contrast into my image actually works pretty well. So. I wouldn't use it as my main source of adding contrast, but adding it as a another effect or another little bit of contrast at the end to tweak the image a tiny last bit, I think this is a pretty fun feature. So last note is that I do have a color grading course. You can check it out in the description below. It teaches you everything you need to know in color grading, and I've made it very easy and simple to understand. That's what all my students say, and there's more than 100 of them now, so I think we can trust the word of them, at least the accumulation of it. So as part from learning color grading and getting access to all of that in a more detailed way than what I do here on YouTube, you also get directly access to asking me all the questions that you have, whether that's through email, a DM on Instagram, or in our small Discord community. I'm always there to help, and I always try to answer the questions as fast as I possibly can. So I really hope to see you in there. And if you just want to support the channel, don't forget to hit subscribe and like, or maybe grab a lot pack that really helped me out to help me make more of these videos as a struggling small YouTube creator at the moment. So. That's it, what I have for you today in this video, and I'll just see you in the next one. Until then, take care.